The Toyota Camry has always had a solid, conservative approach, a rational approach to motoring. It is functional more than being inspiring, and it has continued Toyota's great passion, perhaps even obsession, with uh, the trappings of royalty, particularly the word crown. The first Toyota crown came out in the mid-1950s. We then saw the Corona, which is Latin for crown, and then the Corolla which is Latin for small crown and sometimes associated with a plant. Well, the Camry continues that. It is an anglicised derivative of the Japanese word for crown, kanmuri. So it is continuing this somewhat conservative trend and it has sold very well. But times are changing. And with this new 8th generation Camry, 34 years after it was first introduced, they are making significant changes. For the first time, the major words they're using to describe it are performance and style. So, how does it look on the outside, the inside, and how does it go on the road? Let's find out. The first design sketches for any new model are usually over the top more like a person's doodle on a school exercise book, with the vehicle being much lower to the ground, a roof line that would only suit very small children, wheels with huge rims and tyres that have such a low profile there is practically no rubber. The original drawing and initial direction sketch for the new Camry were a little optimistic, but were surprisingly close to the mark. I think this indicates that the car has come very close to hitting its target. While the Camry has a conservative heritage, Toyota knew it had to break new ground. The chief engineer for the Toyota Motor Corporation, Musatu Katsumata, who led the design and production of this vehicle, does not hold back on the need to make this a car of performance and looks. We have to change our mind and especially the styling. My focus point is an originally driving performance but without an, any styling change no customer may appreciate that the performance so then uh, we have to focus on the completely unprecedented change styling this is the first mm. target for us from the front there are some distinctive lines and features but while they are strong statements it's not too over the top in the way of some other toyota products one thinks most particularly of their small SUV, the CHR. The angular hourglass front grille and side fake vents clearly have a bit of Lexus about them. I think the success of the vehicle as an overall design package is best shown from the side. Following a trend that has appeared on a number of vehicles, most recently the Kia Stinger, there is a long bonnet with a slight arching effect as it goes from window to grille. The look along the length of the vehicle shows a car that has good proportions for such a big car. There's a clever crease at the back between the roof and the waistline, which gives the impression of a lower fastback look, while at the same time not having to drop the roofline a great deal. The roof and the rear window extend back, which is great for passenger headroom, but it does compromise the size of the boot opening, although once inside the boot there is a cavernous space with around 500 litres of capacity. The rear of the car has some strong features without ugly protrusions. There is a very narrow little wannabe vent from the rear tail lights heading downwards about 250 millimetres. I think it fits okay on the brighter or darker coloured cars, although on a white vehicle the black vent gives the look of a Fu Manchu moustache. The sleek profile is more than just a few clever design features. The car is longer and clearly lower, while at the same time providing more space for passengers inside. While the car is lower, it is not awkward to get into. There are four specification grades with the Camry that have new names. The base model is the Ascent. Next is the Ascent Sport. The word sport in a car's specification is not what it used to be. It doesn't mean extra power or better handling, and from what I can work out, the Ascent Sport Camry gives you a bit more bling on the outside and a few features inside, such as dual climate control. Level 3 is the SX, which is the more sporty looking. 
including having the largest wheels at 19 inches with corresponding low-profile tyres. The highest level is the SL and is aimed at luxury, with 18-inch rims with correspondingly not-so-aggressive low-profile tyres, which can help with a smooth ride. The previous model Camry was sold only as a four-cylinder. This eighth-generation Camry will have both four- and six-cylinder engines. The base model 2.5-litre petrol engine comes with 133 kilowatts and 231 newton metres and is rated at 7.8 litres per 100 kilometre in fuel consumption. You get a smidgen more power when you move up from the base model and get dual exhaust pipes, but the fuel consumption jumps disproportionately to 8.3 litres per 100. It comes with a six-speed automatic. Toyota tells us that the powertrain for the hybrid vehicle is all new. The petrol engine is also a 2.5 litre four-cylinder. If it's new and better, I don't know why they don't use it in the base model. Still, it has about the same horsepower as the non-hybrid version, but the electric system gives a combined power output of 160 kilowatts. The hybrid comes with a CVT gearbox. It's rated at an outstanding 4.2 litres per 100 combined cycle fuel consumption. In fact, the figure is much the same for city or country driving. This is better than the first hybrid Camry, which only came with a 1.5 litre petrol engine. The top of the range is a direct injection 3.5 litre V6 with a good 224 kilowatts and 362 newton metres of torque achieving 8.7 litres per 100 kilometres, slightly more though if you are in the SX. It comes with an 8-speed automatic gearbox. The interior also takes an important step away from the bland. There is good room, some nice features, but perhaps the most distinctive aspect of the dashboard is its asymmetric design. The centre screen and control buttons are housed within what looks like the reverse image of a lower case of the letter Y. It's smart and different. The screens are 7 or 8 inches depending on the model, but I particularly like the 10 inch head up display on the top of the range SL. Toyota believes that its entertainment control system has been developed with great care and understanding and does a great job, and so they don't see the need to do a link to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. I think they're wrong. It's not that their system is bad, it's just that as we move into a future where more and more people will be renting different cars at different times, the need for familiarity is an important safety feature. We started our drive program in the regional city of Coffs Harbour, 530 kilometres to the north of Sydney. The lower centre of gravity not only improves its looks, but helps provide better driving dynamics. Road noise varied considerably. On the smooth motorways it was quiet, but on the course of bitumen surfaces the noise increased noticeably. The ride was very comfortable without compromising its road holding or its confidence on bumpy, twisty roads. The base model four-cylinder engine is clearly no rocket. It was not spirited on hilly, twisty roads, but it built up speed acceptably without sounding like you were wringing its neck. For a pleasant drive through some lower standard secondary roads, it coped very well. We will test the hybrid and V6 in more detail at a later stage. Recommended retail prices have gone up and down depending on the model. Prices start at 27690 and go all the way to nearly $44,000, but to this you have to add on-road costs. The recommended price for the base model is up $1,200 and with an increase of $2,500, the more expensive SL model with a four-cylinder engine has gone up the greatest amount. Interestingly, the Ascent and the Ascent Sports hybrid models have decreased in price. In fact, you can now buy a hybrid Camry for under $30,000. Well, just. And of course, you have to add on-road costs. So, in summary, this is the first Camry to be sold in Australia in 30 years that hasn't been built here. But unlike the other large and also defunct Australian-made cars, the Commodore and Falcon, 
Toyota never relied nearly as much on a nationalistic image to sell the Camry. In fact, many people were unaware of the extent of Toyota Australia's production capabilities. The new Camry is very much fit for purpose in its functionality and thankfully it is not a dowdy family sedan. It will appeal to a range of people but it still represents a large car that has the capacity to take five people in comfort with a good deal of luggage.